A paranormal researcher named Eduardo Hounter is exploring an abandoned hospital in the northern part of Mexico City. He gets pretty far and eventually sets up a camera in an old examination room hoping to record some scary things on video. At 3 a.m. things get pretty weird. <laughs> An old chair groans under the weight of an apparent ghost doctor sitting down. I don't think this was done with a string either. The top half of the chair moves while the wheels remain stationary. Or perhaps Eduardo simply put the wheels in a locked position first. I'm not sure what to believe. There's arguments for both explanations, so take one last look and help me decide. Archie Dennis is the name of a Philadelphia man who lives in what he believes is an extremely haunted home. He and his family have been dealing with whatever's down there for more than seven years. It's all well documented on their YouTube channel. I encourage you to watch all the evidence for yourself. But for now, Chills has picked out some videos to help get you started. Ones that make you the most curious. This early encounter takes place on May 17th, 2013. Back when he was less used to it and more afraid. Arky is looking down the steps when something on his spirit box encourages him to go in there. Followed by a mysterious phrase in another language that I need your help to translate. You are demon. You are a demon. Arky says down the steps. It sounds like a statement, but it's actually a question. Something he has always wanted to know. It never says anything back, but this time it does show a sign that yes, it is one indeed. You are demon? The light turns on behind him even though he is nowhere near the switch, and it continues to do so as he films in stunned amazement. Who are you? Say your name. Suddenly, his cats rush up the steps like they are running away from something, though I suspect they could have been chasing each other. He crosses the room at 1 minute and 48 seconds. The lights seem to move on their own while an orb also comes close. It can't be him moving the lights because one hand is on the camera and the other is flipping the switch to no avail. I was thinking that maybe somebody was controlling the real light switch from the other room. But at 1 minute and 58 seconds the light seems to glow even brighter than before and he sounds noticeably upset as he steps away. Oh, man. His fear has probably emboldened the spirit and things have gone way too far if you ask me. He should leave it by now, but day after day, our key continues to ask the spirit if it was a demon whenever he thinks it's near pestering it with the same question for weeks on end. Finally, on December 16, 2014, it gives a clear response. And I'm talking more than a simple yes or no. Are you a demon? The way it answers in a full sentence exactly 5 seconds after being asked is all about the paranormal proof I need to conclude this is real. But I haven't even shown you the weirdest video yet. By October 12th of 2019, the spirit has moved out of the basement and seems fixated with his children. The EMF meter is relatively normal until it passes over his crib, and I think we might be seeing a possession in real time. 2.9, that's for my baby. 3.7, 3.9, 4.0, 3.8. Ninth. Oh man, this is this, this incredible. And his newborn baby is not the only one affected. 
The spirit seems to hover around his daughter as well. The way it appears from behind, goes to the side, and then appears to admire her is going way too far if you ask me. Connor is an urban explorer from the UK who has been making urbex videos for over three years and has had his share of Yuri encounters. The Explorer Returns is the name of his channel, and on it are two places in particular that I bet he wished he never stepped foot in. One of them is the Merrick Park Nursing Home. Shut down in 2014, the nursing home became the center of controversy after two residents lost their lives due to neglect. An investigation revealed the elderly were being fed medication that was out of date and didn't work. They were also helplessly exposed in cold water baths for prolonged periods of time and other mistreatments that no one should have to endure. It's pitch black outside when Connor and his friend Daniel find the place, and the inside is just as dark. His flashlight combs across room after room filled with flowers sent by family members who had no idea what miserable conditions their loved ones were being kept in. The doors still have names on them, and the residents seem to respond to having their name read aloud. Mary Brown. Brown. Connor enters one room and a feeling of intense unease makes him let out an involuntary moan. Oh. A woman's laughter comes from the corner of the room by a pile of her former possessions that are no doubt teeming with energy from her passing. Like I said before, it's only Connor and Daniel, so they shouldn't be hearing any other voices, let alone a laugh like this one. Oh. At any rate, the spirits seem relatively friendly until they make a mistake at 2 minutes and 19 seconds by wiping some leaves off of these two names with their shoe. They meant no disrespect by the gesture, just the opposite actually, but stepping on the names of those who have passed in their own home is bound not to go over well. After all, these spirits have already experienced enough mistreatment when they were still alive. Connor steps at the doorway of a laundry room lined with someone's clothes. He doesn't notice the arm of the shirt sleeve move on its own. It's probably just a draft from the open window now that I look closer at it, but that still doesn't explain the angry eyes peering at him from within. They somehow miss this and instead focus on something upstairs. The power is off and yet, a strange chime takes them up a floor. The tension grows as they track it from room to room until the source is only a few feet away. <laughs> They find a motion sensor that stays on for as long as the door remains open. However, it wasn't going off until recently, so that means the door must have just opened when no one was on that floor. It's weird, but they're more relieved it's not an alarm, so they press on to the third floor. Holes in the roof have left some rooms filled with leaves and open to the elements. They don't find much up here, and when they are ready to leave, their suspicions about opening doors are confirmed. Nothing, it's just empty just rooms. I told you. The door that they had clearly left open at 12 minutes and 50 seconds is now mysteriously closed. Either it has shut on its own, which is certainly possible because it's pretty thin and lightweight, or else something closed it besides them. As they are leaving the Merrick Park nursing home, the camera picks up a final occurrence. Listen. The craziest of all, though, has to be when Connor explores an abandoned asylum at 1 in the morning. Through the woods and under a gate lies the hapless estate, where many were held their entire lives. It takes Connor 8 minutes just to find an unboarded window, and by then he is almost too fearful to venture inside. Aside from the paranormal, this looks to be a possible hangout for tough locals as well. The inside is completely and unnaturally silent. The house doesn't creak, crack, or settle at all. Connor keeps hearing things that don't register up on camera, and he suspects that something is in the large room with him. He sets up a K2 meter to detect electromagnetic energy but finds none. He talks out loud to a spirit who apparently isn't there, then gets moving again. Or maybe the spirit was listening close by all along. 
this comes down. When he goes into the next room, he catches on camera a fleeting glimpse of a tall shadow at 12 minutes and 15 seconds. He doesn't see the shadow man in real life, but his equipment certainly does. It's not graffiti either. If that's what you were thinking, because when he comes back downstairs and turns at 17 minutes 4 seconds, the wall it was standing against is clean. It's nowhere to be found. Meanwhile, the room where Connor left his K2 meter suddenly experiences odd activity as a mysterious white light slowly grows into a beam for a full minute, from 15 minutes and 15 seconds to 16 minutes and 15 seconds, and then fades away. He goes back to the K2 meter and runs some more experiments. None of his questions get any answers, and it doesn't seem interested in communicating with him at all, or at least not as much as it wants to from a distance. He sets up the K2 meter in another room and decides if this doesn't work then he will end the investigation. He doesn't know that he has already caught both a shadow figure and a mysterious white light on tape already and is growing somewhat frustrated. Just when he is ready to give up, the shadow man returns. and as he quivers in the cold, he fails to miss two eyes looking at him from the doorway where the footsteps just were. The K2 meter still hasn't gone off, but that's because it's not in the room with him. It's clearly waiting just outside. Upon announcing that this investigation is over, the Shadow Man takes it upon himself to walk into the same room and make itself known. Holy Thank you so much for getting me to 20,000 subscribers here on my Clips channel. If you want to support, please press that subscribe button. Let's get to 30,000 subscribers next. Thank you.